Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Okay, back to Genesis 1. And we're going to look at this chapter here, the first of the Bible. And usually when you're reading the Bible and you find a word, and the first time it's used in the Bible, that will set off that word for the rest of the Bible in the context. So what we do is we start in the beginning God. So here's the first place we see God. And before all is God. There's no question where did God come from. The Bible takes it for granted that there was God and God has always been. And here he shows up. He shows up as a creator. God created by God. We don't see no evolution. We will not see evolution. We will not see theistic evolution in the Bible. The Bible points out even as our own Bible reading tonight. God made it. People who say otherwise, as we saw in Romans chapter 1, they're going to stand before God guilty of lying about God when it comes to creation and evolution. The heaven. Here's the first time we see heaven. It's a small age. This is not God's domain. This is the heaven in the outer space. This is where all... What we're going to see later, this is where all the stars, moons, planets are. But the, right now, there is no stars. There is no sun. There is no moon. So in the very beginning, heaven was not like the heaven we see. And we see later on in Revelation, when we come to the end, there's a new heaven. As the heavens will dissolve. And we see earth, verse 1. And it's not Mother Earth. It's a planet made by God. And it's not a capital E, as we see later on in this chapter. It's a small E. This is not the Earth that we have today, as far as what we see. This is the heaven and earth that were in the beginning. We have some kind of gap theory where destruction chaos judgment and we see in two and the earth was without form and void so this planet was without form and void and we see the first time the word void it's empty it's nothing it is the result of God's judgment so when you see the word void in your Bible you're to see it as nothing Without God, God's not present in this earth. God is not involved with it. When God finally comes and appears back on this earth, what is this earth? It's void. It's empty. It has no value. And that's what everything is without God. There's no value at all. Like a moon? Hmm? Like a moon, yeah. There's just no reason. No purpose. Um... They have a thing called a vanity. If it's empty, there's nothing there for you. You make a check void. It means it, there's no more. It, it is of no of value. And this is the absence of God when you see this word. And darkness. Now this is the first time we see darkness in the Bible. And it is the absence of God. And you check darkness and dark through the rest of your Bible to Revelation. And it is not in characteristic of God God has nothing to do with the darkness it has to do with Satan it has to do with wickedness 
God is never of dark. God is light. Jesus Christ is light. And we see the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So we've seen God, God as the head of the, the, the Godhead, the Father. Now we see the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? He's working side by side with God as Creator. You cannot put the Holy Spirit absent from God because here He is. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. It's like that Holy Spirit goes first. Even God the Father can't go first. God the Father cannot reach to a dark, void, wicked planet without His Holy Spirit. So what do you see as far as the Christian? God cannot come to that wicked, vile, worthless sinner. And they say, you know, God hates the sin, and He, and he loves the sinner. That's a bunch of lies what's Jesus tell us he has to send the Holy Spirit first into our heart to prepare our hearts to reprove us of sin he got to get that darkness in our heart it has to show up by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit comes in before God and says hey I got some work to do here in verse number three said God said we are speaking, God speaking. The very first time the order of your Bible, Genesis to Revelation, the first time you see something said, it is God. Now I know Isaiah 14 and, and Chronicle order, but we're not doing Chronicle order. We're doing the order of the Bible. <coughs> and the Bible says the first thing in order, God said. And with John chapter 1 and 1 John, we see that the Word is Jesus Christ. It is with God. It is God. So we see the Trinity showing up in the creation that God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, God Jesus Christ made everything. Again, when you run back to evolution, you are in dire need of loss because you're messing with the Trinity, the, the three-point Godhead. You are telling all three members of God they're liars. I wouldn't want to be in that shoe. And then we see, there. let there be light. Here's the first time light shows up. There was darkness. Now God says, I want light. This is not the sun. This is not fluorescence. This is a light that is spoken by God through Jesus Christ. On a dark, miserable, void, formless planet and you will be form and formless and void until God's life comes into you it says in uh, second uh, first Corinthians that Satan is the God of this world he'll keep you in darkness it spoke about Jesus there was darkness in the land of Zebulun until Christ came and brought light the world is in darkness the church represented by the moon is that ruling light of the night. We're the only light of this world. Re reflected off the light of God. Uh, verse 4. It says, God divided the light from the darkness. There's that light. There's the darkness. Divide. It's always light. It's dark. It's good. It's evil. It, these are the right people of God. These are the bad people of God. Division in the Bible is a Bible doctrine. There is no middle of the road. It makes God sick as far as the church age. There are goat nations and there are sheep nations. There is God or there's Belial. There's God or there's Satan. You can have the Christ or you can have the Antichrist. It's called for separation. Verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. This is a day without sun. This is an absolute day of God. It symbols in the Bible the day of the Lord, the judgment day. This is where Christ will come in and reveal to many what you've done wrong. Judgment, the night, 
It's the equal to darkness and evil and wickedness. Used to be, not today, it used to be that most crimes, most sinful activities were done in the night. Now, with the fouled up law system that we've got and the unpenalized of criminals, it happens all the time now. This world is going into darkness. It's going into no light all around us. Verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament. This is the first time the firmament shows up and shows up in this chapter. It is our outer space. It is what is between God and man. That separation from us to God is darkness with lights. We'll see later stars and moons and suns and galaxies. But that firmament, it's firm. It's, you cannot build a tower. You cannot get to God by rockets. It's firm. That separates us from God. And the only way to break that foundation today in the church age is by the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you die to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord, you fly through that firmament. Or when the church is raptured. There's no other way through that firmament but by the blood of Jesus Christ today. Even the Old Testament saints did not go through the firmament. They went down to Abraham's bosom. So the firmament itself divides us from God. You can look north, but you're not going to see God. God's the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. In verse 10, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and herb yielding seed, and fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, it was sown. So in um, verse 10, I read the wrong. And God called the dry land Earth, capital E, and gathered together of the waters, and he called the seas, capital S. And God saw that it was good. Verse 10, we see the seas. It's made by God. And there's no life in it. It has taken the waters from the universe. And he has said to the seas, I want you to be gathered into one place. He has taken the land. He says, I want you to be gathered to the other place. And he calls it Earth, capital E. Now you have a distinguished planet. We didn't see the capital E previously in this chapter. God has finally now said, this is a planet. There is no life on this planet yet. It will be. Again, I and he said in verse 10, it is good. He sees the earth and the seas. For the first time, the word good shows up. God looked at that earth. God looked at the waters. He said, I like that. That's good. Verse 4, he said good. Verse 4? Oh, verse 4. Okay, take that back. Verse 4, the light is good. I missed that. So the first thing of good is not to see is that light. And Jesus said, the light. I am the light. So Jesus Christ is the only good one. But the Bible says there is none good. And if Christ says, I'm the light of the world. There it is. And we already read verse 11. We see grass. The first life that shows up on this planet is grass. And Jesus gave us parables and illustrations that man's life is as grass. One day it's growing, then it's mowed down, and it's put on the roofs. It dryeth and dieth. And man today, they put all their fortune some into grass. They'll have all the grubs removed. They'll take out all the dandelion. They'll spend their money. They'll spend their weekend. It's amazing. People will be mowing their grass on a Sunday. Where they could be sitting in an air-conditioned church. But they'd rather be sweating grass. The first life that shows up on this planet, grass, is the first time grass shows up in the Bible. Not even man shows up. Not even whales. Save the whales. You got grass. Then you have herb. You have spices that will become food 
for animals and man and grass that that grass is needed because we're going to have some animals that eat grass so before God brings animals and men God has already providing a living source for them to eat imagine God making man and then not able to make anything for him to eat evolution is all by accident you can't explain a woman in evolution. Where did a woman come? It's always the ape, the man. Well, where did a woman come from? And yet, if God had made man and did not make any food for him, if God had made the cows and gave them no grass to eat, they'd be lying out on the ground dead. Life for animals and life for man comes by life, grass, the first thing that shows up, and herbs. Herbs are used for salads. It's used for spices. Medicine, which is not needed yet to after Genesis chapter 3. And the first time we see tree. Some people think, oh, tree, you know, the tree of knowledge, the good and evil, the tree of life. No, the first tree in the Bible is a fruit tree. It is a living tree of lumber and food. What man will take apples pears oranges to eat he also takes those trees and he'll cut them down and he'll build he'll make a fire later on it will be perverted not here it will be perverted to make idols a tree was never made to be idolized a tree was never made to be worshipped never a family tree a tree was made for fruit that man may enjoy that animals enjoy. And then we again see in verse 11, we see the first word, fruit. Fruit is a product or produce from trees and its food. And we will step here. Before Genesis 3, I can almost 99% assume that there were no fruit trees that were bad for people. Under, Not under the curse, every tree that had fruit would have been safely would have been without poison for man to eat so god's providing us life god is giving a living sub substance <coughs> excuse me but <coughs> he's giving us a living substance by something that's living we eat living stuff if you went to a, an apple tree and plucked that apple that apple's living now, if you get out of the grocery store and all that, it's not living no longer. It's been dead for a while. And it'll rot and decay. We also see seed. Seed is a familiar word in the Bible that's used by God. It's called the Word. It is for a woman to have a child by a man. We see seed in first use here. It's an application that fruits will produce themselves. By what is contained inside the fruit. Now we can run this issue as far as abortion. I don't get too much in that. But there's life in that fruit. And you just got to plant it. There is life in the womb. You got to wait for it to bear. There's life. Jesus said except the uh, carnal wheat fall to the ground and die. It will not produce any fruit. It's life. It's a representation of the gospel, Mark chapter 4. And yet this is given to man to eat. 6.14 And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days and years. Now we've got lights in the plural. We had the light of God, Jesus Christ. Now we've got light. And here the lights are the sun, the moon, and the stars. When we talk about God said, let there be light, when we look at light here in verse 14, we're not talking about the artificial light of God. These are supernatural lights provided by God for a usage. And it's not to lie out in front, half naked, in front of the sun. God has told you why he's made the sun. It's for signs, it's for seasons, it's for days, it's for years. It's not to undress and lay in front of. 
And man will tell you yourself, if you do that, you have chances of skin cancer. You have chances of doing your body destruction. That sun was never made to, to lie in front of. We have a sign. Jews require a sign. Now you got to remember Genesis was written when Moses was on the mountain with God. Genesis does not get revealed unto God gives it to Moses and Moses reads it before the children of Israel. And by then since, since Israel has come out of Egypt, they know what signs are for. There's been signs in the Bible of the sun with Joshua, stop the sun until I invade this army. And I forget which king it was. He said, well, what sign shall I get? I'm going to turn the sundial back 10 degrees. And the, and the entire world records the fact is that that sun went the wrong way. And up shows the Babylonians. like, you know, And the Babylonians knew right where to go to the God of Israel, to the God of Jerusalem. Something happened in those skies. And it's your fault. That's a sign to other people in the nation that God controls our son. For seasons, God made that son to produce the summer the winter, the fall, and the spring. That sun is where the prediction of that sun lies. At certain times of the year, we can base it upon planting and growing. God provided the sun so we may have plants and vegetables. Sometimes some animals, animal husbandry, were producing other animals. And when you got a nation that goes against God and go against the sun, that we're building everything on concrete, and then we give all our food to chemicals that violate Genesis chapter 1, and then you wonder why you got a sick nation. And then when you take what God has given to you, and you, like I said, you, you burn yourself on the beach, you lay out in front of that sun what God never intended to do, then you're going to do suffer to your body. God's way for that sun is for planting. It's to show, hey, look, you're to look at that sun and say that that sun is made by God. But you're taught out of it in, in Romans chapter 1. The days are for solar days or lunar days. Now, in the Bible, it's lunar days. Israel bases their calendar on the phrases of the moon and each month begins with the new moon that's where there's no moon in the sky that would tell the Jews hey oh there's no moon tonight there's no clouds so it means this is the first of the month when that when that Sun becomes I mean that moon becomes bright and full it's the end of the month and the moon too is used by planting there are certain things in crops you plant when that moon is in a Pacific position upon the earth and when we get the Sun and the moon for seasons and sun eclipses that shows us the relationship of God to the people when that moon gets in front of the Sun as far as the earth the Sun is blocked you cannot have the church get in the way of God it blocks the Sun out and then when the earth gets in between the moon and the Sun I mean between the yeah, the moon and the sun, then the moon gets no light. And when you got yourself, the world is first, and gets between you and God, there's no light upon you. And stars. And I've said this many times. All the stars in the universe that God knows that man does not know. And he says, he made the stars also. That's a P.S. Isn't that sun great? Isn't that moon great? All the things you can do with those sun and all the things you can do with the moon, and I made the stars off. And yet navigation is used to be ruled by the stars. The, there are 12 constellations to the 12 tribes of Israel. I don't know if anybody's ever got that worked out yet. It's not for the horoscopes. There's something about those stars because Joseph said, I dreamed the dream. 
and the eleven stars bow down before me. That woman in Revelation chapter 12, she's got the 12 stars. Those stars are somehow related to the 12 tribes of Israel. In verse 18, and to rule over the day, we got rule. Everybody wants to reign. Everybody wants to be president. Everybody wants to have a throne. Everybody wants to be in charge. But when we see rule, the first time in the Bible, there is no man. It's not a kingdom. It's not a throne. It's not the Oval Office. It's not the Red Square. It's not a military night. The first time we see rule, we got the sun and moon. And it's the day and the night. That sun is in charge of the day. And that moon is in charge of the night. What kind of rule it has? It gives light. It gives information. That sun and moon is to rule your life. Again, looking at husbandry. Of animal husbandry. And plant in, uh, husbandry. Farmer's book. Farmer's almanac. If I can give that book in good and good rating that book will tell you when by the Sun and by the moon as far as I still can tell I used to buy that every time I made a garden every year that would tell you exactly when to plant your peas plant your corn at what time now, as far as the weather prediction and stuff like that I wouldn't go for that no it's also a good book to help you tell you about grass and tell you about herbs and animals I go so far that the farmer's own man taken from the Bible. 120. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that, that hath life, and fowls that they fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Now, 20, we got the first moving. And the first moving is not packing up your boxes and putting them into a into a truck and going somewhere else and then unpacking about everybody hates moving but the first Bible moving is the marine life nothing moves according to the Bible except marine life life moves we see creatures and it's kind of interesting the Bible said go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature if God loves the sinner, why does he reference him back to a bunch of sea animals and fowls? Do you know what fowls are in the Bible according to Mark chapter 4? It's Satan. Do you know the fish symbol is not a representation of Jesus Christ? If you take that creature there, which is the, the fish in the water, seals and everything in the marine water, and Jesus told Peter, Andrew, James, and John, Come, I'll let you be fishers of men. Leviathan is a great sea serpent. Fish and creatures are reptiles made after the absence of one cherubim missing in heaven, Ezekiel and Revelation. You cannot take this creature and go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You cannot apply that fish to Jesus Christ. Really? You know why you would think that that fish symbol is Christ? I got a great family that I love that, that witnessing in Sierra Leone. And their verse is, gather the fragments. At least if you lost it, I misquoted that verse. But what was one of those things that Jesus had that he fed the 5,000? Fish. So, are you telling me that as a fish symbol that when Jesus broke that fish and gave it to everybody you're eating Jesus you see how they get back to the mass fish is, is a symbol of an unsaved man fish and marine animals do not go to heaven whales do not go to heaven no matter if you save them life have life that's the first time life shows up, and again, it's a reference to marine animals. Why do people want to save the whales? Why do they want to save the manatees? Why do they want to save the sea turtles and the and the and the uh, tuna fish? Because the Bible says the first place there's life is a, is the marine life. 
Isn't that interesting? I bet you they don't even know that. Yeah, that's life in the ocean, but that's not eternal life. Fowls. That's the bird class. Again, when you read Mark chapter 4, that's a representation of Satan. But there is a cherubim in glory that has a face of an eagle. But Satan is so close to that. Satan has a man's face in the tribulation period called the false prophet. Satan is likened to the lion that devours his enemy as a lion upon the cherubim face. Ox. The ox face. Remember Aaron? Remember this little thing that popped out? Hi, how are you doing? Oh, Moses, I, I threw it in the fire and boom, out came this cow. Yeah. You know what animals worship in Egypt? The cow. You know a, a chicken place that has a cow as their representation? Eat chicken? Oh, sorry. You have to say that? Yeah, I got to say that. It's the truth. 21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw his good. Now notice it says, which the waters brought forth. See, evolution in a way is correct. Life came from the waters. Not the way they said it. Not the way they designed it. God said, hey, God did not make a fish on the land. He made the fish in the water. You stay in the water. I can preach a God from heaven talking about, stay in that water. No, it's not. It's not it. They stayed exactly where God wanted them. You know the only way you take a fish out of water? Or you take a whale out of Well, whales come beaks and stuff. You know you take a fish out of water? You go fishing for it. Other than that, fish naturally do not come walking. As far as these whales that are beaching themselves, leave them alone. They're trying to grow legs. Stop dragging them back out. Idiots. So we see now great. This is the first great in the Bible. Now what is the representation of the word great that you will see in the Bible? Now there's a great woman of uh, Shunema. All right. Great is a word that's used most often in the Bible. Look at a whale. The whale is the biggest known animal in the waters. So when you see great, you, you big, large, huge. I don't know about that Shumanai. There's a great woman Shumanai. It's also the, the most powerful animal. Great gives you size and power. I wouldn't want to mess with a whale. You know, you talk about whaling. Many whalers did not come home because those whales destroyed the ships that chased them. Many sailors were killed by the whales. Great whales. And then, that's okay. I don't need it. Oh, what do we got? We got the whale. Now, what an interesting animal about this. For the evolutionists, this is your marine mammal. It's not like your ordinary fish. How do you know how ordinary it is? Take Jonah and what Jesus said about Jonah in that whale. And you know what they say about Jonah? They say Jonah is a great fish tail. Why did they use that term for? Because they're going scripture with scripture. So first time whale shows up. He's a great whale. He's a big whale. And then we see kind. The first word kind. And this is an animal classification. Cats give birth to kitties, kittens. Dogs give birth to puppies. Chickens give birth to chicken, uh, chicks. This kind is monkeys do not give birth to humans. Shrimp do not give birth to monkeys. This is a very important statement that you can't even apply this to theistic evolution. God has stated with the first part of a word that shows up in the Bible. He has laid out the rules and regulations set out by the rest of his Bible. Winged. 
This is the first time it shows up, and it's reference to fowls. They are winged. You don't see the first time winged as angels. You see birds. They got wings. 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. Now with 22, we have the first blessing. First happy in the Bible. What's the first thing that God's happiness is? He's talking to the marine animals. He's talking to the birds. You guys be happy making other fishes. You guys be happy making other whales. You be happy making other birds. Now, isn't that kind of weird that that would be the first place the word blessed show up? And blessed means happy when you go ask Leah when she's naming her boys. I think it's Asher. All the world will say, I'm blessed, and I'll name my son. I think it's Asher. Blessed. Now, that's weird. Now, you go all the way from now to Revelation, you look at the word blessed, and you would never think, if you had a trivial question, what would be the first place that God blessed? A, man. B. And I don't know, C would be, you know, the mammals and, I mean, the marine animals and the birds, and then you got to answer D. You would not think to choose C as far as the marine life the first time it shows up. So, I, you know, I guess the animals can be happy. God blesses them. But God did not save them. So you can be blessed and you may not go to heaven. Animals are blessed, but they're not going to heaven. Be worry on that one. Multiply. Now this is not breaking out your calculator and you know two times two, fourteen times twenty-eight. This is to make more. And the first time multiply shows up, you think it'd be a math equation, and he's again he's talking to the marine life. I want you to make a whole bunch of marine. I want you to make a whole bunch of fishing. And these are the animals, again, that did not have to go into Noah's Ark. They were not taken by twos. They were not taken by sevens. I don't know what to say, but I would assume that one time on this planet, the sea life was just full. And remember, we're going to a part where God's going to say, Adam, yes, I got a job for you. What? I want you to name the animals. Okay, giraffe, kangaroo, horse, bluebird, get tired of this. I want you to go over by that river. Why? We got more animals. And I can just picture God just moving these animals by Adam. Okay, what are you going to name that one? Goldfish? I'm going to name that one. Whale? That came from God. Oh, that came from Adam. Adam named the animals. Remember, this book is written after Israel is out of Egypt. Genesis is not written as it's going on. It can't be written by man right now because there's no man. So you see blast and you see multiply of marine life and fowls, and you would not expect that to be there. And you see the first time the word fill. And he's talking to the marine life again. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it to the full. The book of Acts, you know, the Lord filled me with the Holy Spirit so I could preach the word of God. And you run back to, oh God, you're talking about a bunch of fish and water. And if you were to study this out, there, there is a common cause between this link and the rest of the passages in the Bible. I haven't found them all yet, but you will find that link. You will find out why blessed is related to this marine life and the, and the fowl to something as you go through the Bible. Because that's the first place it shows up. This is the first place where Phil shows up. And God just does not play scrabble of words. There's a reason why those two. Notice how blessed, all right, forget the marine animals. Notice how the word blessed and Phil show up in the same verse at the same time. And the Bible speaks about a man that preaches the gospel, that teaches the gospel. He is being filled with the Holy Spirit.
Go more on that. I can't. I don't know. Verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, creepy thing, and the beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. So, now we got cattle. First time cattle shows up, cow. God made them. They come from the ground. They come from the earth. They come after the marine life. So if you want a $20,000 TV show quiz, if you can answer this question, which came first, the marine life or the mammals? The marine life. And you would think as far as American goes, as that cow, he would have been the first one ever to be made. He is the first one to ever be worshipped. He is worshipped in most, if not correctly, all religions. <coughs> He's represented as the holy cow. In our language in our talk but there he is he shows up after the sea life we got creepy thing there's your bugs and your worms there they are you wouldn't think the Bible would give you bugs and worms you don't think the Bible would give you such characteristics and yet evolution throws all kinds of theories in there God said I just made them right after the cows I made the creepy things I mean, after all, the cows won't have fun with their tails if I don't make flies to fly around them. There they are. Your rodents. Those little things that creep on the ground, the bugs. There they are. And God mentions them. And it says, God said, let the earth bring forth and creepy things. God made them creepy things. Sometimes we think they're made of Satan, but they're not. And beasts. This is the first time beast shows up. You would think probably much any Baptist today, oh, the beast would be represented to the Antichrist. Bulls, tigers, kangaroos, giraffes, dogs, cats. There they are. <coughs> there they show up. Lions and tigers and bears. And they're made all before man. Man just hasn't shown up yet. You know, you ever think about this? If God stopped right here, and God, and this is verse 25, God made the beasts of the earth after this kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw it was good. In paragraph. You realize if God would have stopped there, everything would have been fine? No, no animal sin. It's not until God makes man, and a little bit later on, man says, Okay, God, I'm going to disobey you. And then the animals get cursed because of Adam and Eve. So, uh, we have and 25. No, 26. And God said, Let us make man in our own image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. A little gold fish in the jar. A goldfish doesn't put a human in a, a little bowl, does he? You never see a fish trying to fish for a man. I can picture a fish going home and say, you see the human that got away from me today. That don't happen. And over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. We're given in charge of those creepy things. Yet they outnumber us. There's probably more ants than there's been humans. So what we got here? We got man, the first one to show up. We know his name is Adam. Humans now show up after the animals. And he's made by God. And some people say animals are better than man. What animal did you see the word image? God's image. When did God say to himself as far as the Trinity, all right, we're going to make this animal after us? It doesn't happen. Because image now shows up for the first time and it's the reference of man. Man is to be like God, body, soul, and spirit. And we see the word likeness. God's likeness. Now do you see what the danger is when you make imagery and idolatry? You are raising man up higher than God where God made man. 
You have now made a God from man. You make a man-made God. And God doesn't like that. He doesn't appreciate it. Because he said, I made man in my image. And then when you make animal imagery and animal idols, now you stepped out of the realms because God said, I just made them. They're not after my image. I never made those animals to be uh, reverend. I never made those animals be worshipped. It's supposed to be me. What on earth are you doing? No image, no likeness shows up until God makes man. And we see the word dominion. This is to reign over the animals and the earth. You are in charge, man. You can take a dog and make him your pet. You can take a fish and make him your pet. You can take a monkey and make him do tricks for you. Never does a monkey take a man and make tricks for the monkey. And then the fish, that's the first time fish shows up. And he's already talked about the marine. He brings the fish up in relationship to man. Again, it can't be Jesus Christ. Are you telling me if Jesus Christ is the fish? Right? Lose my book again. Let, now, now watch this. Let's get careful with what we say and put on our card. Because if Jesus Christ is the fish, let them, man, have dominion over the fish of the sea. So you're telling me you have dominion over Jesus Christ. Really? Some churches preach that. Some churches uh, value they, that they are in charge of Jesus. They keep Jesus in a box. And you do what you want with Jesus. And Jesus has to do what you want. If you think Jesus is a fish. Context is, man's in charge of the fish. That can't be Jesus. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So, own. The word own, O-W-N, that is in relationship to God. When we talk about the word O-W-N, you know the relationship you get to that? It goes to God. I own my house. No, who gave you that house? Who gave you the raw material to make that house? I did. The people that built the house. My employer gave me. No, no, God. I own my car. No, you don't own your car. God made the resources. God made everything that puts that car together. This is my family. No, who gave you the family? Own is a relationship, and we must not forget to God. And God's only allowing us to use it for our pleasures. We don't thank God for what He owns. We take the credit. Now we got a trouble. We got male and female. We live in 2017. Today, people don't know what the difference between male and female is. And God said from the very ch first chapter of the book, and look where male and female show up. Do you see male and female with the animals? No. What's male and female? It shows up with man. So man, if you don't know what you are, you are violating scripture. You are a dummy. I don't care what you think about me. God said, I created man, and I made him male and female. Anything else? You're wrong. You'll be held accountable. God will hold you. He will open up all those people who don't know what they are. He will open up his Bible in the Great White Stone Judgment, Genesis 1 and 27, and read to you. I made you, I made you male, or I made you female. Plain and simple. Isn't God great? So, 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth into upon the earth. Replenish is to refill, redo again. And it's subject to man that something happened in that gap. That God didn't say it to the marine animals, God did not say it to the cows. He spoke to Adam, he says, refill this earth. It was filled before. As much as the, the marine life, when we looked at the first time, Phil showed up. And what we see now, the animals that were in the waters, Phil, fill it up. 
Adam, fill up the earth and look at the earth population today. It's been filled. We have done what God has spoken to us. And can anybody who works with population numbers, can anybody figure out why there's so many people in China and why there's not enough jobs in America, realize that you're taking it right back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, when he told man, go ahead and fill it up. By going to the store, you get a refill. That's what Adam's doing. Subdue. That's to bring on the cultivation. It's to be that husbandman. That was the original. That is the oldest profession of man. They say prostitution. You're alive. The oldest profession of man was a gardener, was a husbandman. That Mary thought that in the garden she saw the gardener, Jesus Christ. And I, I see it on some game show where you know, the oldest profession is prostitute. You're wrong. Adam was a gardener. Eve was a help me. 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, every tree in which the fruit of a tree yieldeth yielding seed to you, it shall be for me. Giving. God said, I've given. Who is the first one who has given in the Bible? God. Who does he give it to? He gives it to man. For God so loved the world that he gave. Look at that. And what's he give man? He gives him a fruit seed. Fruit of the Spirit. A tree that is living. Christ is our living. A tree that Christ died on. Now you can't get that giving. And you can't run that to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't know the Bible. You know, it says in Isaiah 53 that Jesus shall see his seed. The church, that's me. Look at that. In Genesis 2.29, we see glory. We see the work of Jesus Christ. And we haven't even got to Genesis 3.15. Christ is through this whole thing. We saw him with the light. God said, let there be light. And without God speaking to Jesus Christ, we would not have light. Because what do you get if you're dark? With no light. You get death. You get no light. 20, uh, uh, 130. And to every beast of the earth, to every fowl of the air, to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there, there is life, have given every green herb for me. And it was so. Green. The first time we see green, it is reference to vegetation and not a stoplight. I throw it in there. Green is a green is a representation. What do people put green as? Life. And God said, "Eat green herbs. Eat all the salads you can." Green fruits are most hated by who? If you take a child and give him something green, that's a vegetable. They're going to turn away from it. They don't like spinach. They don't like broccoli. They don't like Brussels sprouts. And let God said, I'm giving you those green things. And then the last one we see is meat. Meat. That's a funny kind of word there, meat, because you would think meat would be, oh, yeah, hamburger, right? You would think, oh, pork. And yet the first place meat shows up, it's a salad. It's Brussels sprouts. It's apples. It's yeah. any produce. Nuts, beans. Nuts, beans. Anything that came from a, a plant. It has no reference to an animal. And yet you will see meat in the Bible, and it will be either animal, or you say, well, that, that doesn't fit there, because maybe it's vegetation. Meat means food. That's what it means. And these are the first times these words are showing up. And I'll leave it to other studies as you read through your Bible. When you see a particular word, you say, well, wait a minute. I haven't seen that word. Like you take the thing, is the next. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. There's the first time finished shows up. All right. 
Is God all done with everything? So finish does not mean the end. So when a body dies, you say, well, they're finished. No, they're not. There's still more to come. When I told you when we finish Revelation, it says the end. Cross that out because it ain't the end. So this is a little word study. Go through your Bible. And you come to a particular word, get a concordance or something, and look it up. And then see what that first word. And that will set the tone, usually, not all cases, for that word we're being used in the Bible. Check out the first time Jesus is used. You'll find that interesting. Find out the first time the Word of God. They're all interesting. 